Welcome to No Movies and How. I'm Akwa Scott, and today we are reviewing Emily the Criminal. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Uh, Theo. I think the guy's name is Theo. <laughs> the, I'm like, oh, it's the guy from The Defenders. He was in. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm having one of those moments, but. I know exactly where he's from and I can't think of it right now. And I was like, oh, wow, I haven't seen him in a very long time. I didn't recognize him as anyone I, as anyone I had seen before. And I think of her as the person from Parks and Recreation. Yes. Luke Cage. There we go. Was he a Luke Cage? Mm-hmm. He played, I want to say like a henchman, like the right hand to this woman who owned like this club. Oh, I don't remember that at all. Hmm. When I saw the trailer for this movie, Emily the Criminal, I didn't think it looked good. Hmm. It sort of seemed like something I had already seen before. I've actually never seen the trailer for this. I don't know how. I think I've only seen the poster. Oh. And I was like, oh, Aubrey Plaza. Of course I'm going to see this. So you're a fan of Aubrey Plaza. I like her. I just haven't seen. So I don't know if you remember. I remember there was a trailer for a movie that was like a, some type of like spy thriller with she was in the cast along with, I think, maybe Jeremy Renner and maybe um, Josh Hartnett. And it was supposed to be kind of like this uh, European like car switch, some type of like weird chasing movie thing and she was like in the cast and I remember seeing this trailer like twice and then all of a sudden haven't heard a thing about this movie there I think there's another I think it's a tv series that might be on either HBO or Amazon of like these nuns and I know that she's in that haven't watched it yet (laughs) and then I just saw the like a poster for this um outside of like Nighthawk maybe when we went to like Sundays on Fire and I was like oh that's interesting and it was in the theater on Thursday so decided to see it but I just feel like I don't see her in films like I see her in TV with Parks and Recs the last movie I saw her in probably was like like Scott Pilgrim that was like literally 10 years ago (laughs) In the trailer, it just seems like a a sort of run-of-the-mill caper, but she says in the trailer, towards the end of the trailer, she says, the problem is I didn't go far enough, or that, you know, that line where I didn't yeah. go. Yeah. And so you think that she's been caught, and that's what she's saying, like, oh, I, I got caught, but I didn't go far enough. So you don't realize that, like, all the things that happen after that are going to happen you just think like that it's a caper she gets caught the end yeah so it just doesn't it didn't look good but then um there is kind of a dearth of other offerings right now and so Dax was looking through the movies that he hasn't seen and he said you know this one looks pretty good so um so we went to see it and it was much better than I thought it would be yeah and she, I really liked it. yeah, she's the primary, she carries the whole movie. Um, and yeah, I, I thought the interaction with the people who worked at the advertising agency was funny because <laughs> it's true. And, uh, that was especially, uh, impactful, but it was, I mean, all, all the devils are there, right? <laughs> I love, I loved that part where it's just like you know how do you, I mean it's true like how do you expect people to you know live if they're an intern but also like yeah I don't know I just feel like her friend wasn't really being a friend if she knew that the role was going to be an internship and not like a you know a, an entry level role um so it's like if she knew then why didn't she tell her friend who clearly she, you know, she knows that she has some, uh, some debt that she's trying to get rid of. So that was kind of like, oh, you kind of have a bad friend uh, who put you in that situation 
for you to, you know, say that, you know, people should be paid. Right. And they don't, I mean, I, to my knowledge, people aren't doing unpaid internships these days. Like when I went uh, to college, I did three unpaid internships. Um, so for like a year and a half, uh, but and actually, you end up paying for those because you have oh, yeah. to pay tuition. Yep. So you pay tuition and then the school hooks you up with like a job for six months. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, but all of the interns at the ad agencies I've worked at in New York and since New York pay their interns. In fact, some of them bring them in for the summer and pay for like their apartment for six weeks or whatever. As that's amazing yeah 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 like i was like wait where was this program when i was interning yeah oh gosh well maybe la is a little different but you would think that they would pay but i i thought this was good uh it was very interesting um so woman who has a lot of debt who is trying to have you know trying to live an artistic lifestyle and uh financially things aren't working out so she's like a cater waiter um and receives information on how to make more money um which seems completely implausible like suspension of belief you know now that we have money on our phone like what's the point in having credit cards and also like fast transaction periods of time but good for storytelling. Um, and I thought it was great, but also I thought the the naivety of the guy that she was with <laughs> and how like, is like how he interpreted things with the family business versus like, you know, it was just like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. And it's like, what? You aren't thinking like two steps ahead. Right. I mean, who knows when the script was written? Like, mm -hmm. to your point about the credit cards, it may have sat on the shelf for a while or taken a long time. Yeah. Greenlit. Yeah, there were, I mean, there were definitely, like, things that were questionable, but not so much. Like, not as much as some other movie. Yeah. yeah I can see people true. making poor decisions and getting themselves into a position where, you know, at, where she was just like, I'm sorry, and she takes the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Or I can totally see, like, one thing that I know is probably true is, like, the Craigslist thing of, you know, a high price item for pretty cheap, and people run those scams, and then someone will try to, knows that you have money because they've, like, realized, like, your information is up fairly often, and they'll try to rob you. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, of all the things that guy said no, don't do, right. she, like, went and did it, and I'm just like, oh, Right. Especially don't do it when you're, when you're babysitting your friend's dog. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Um, and for some reason I thought like, you know, when she was making more money and they didn't really show, like they only like when, for example, when she went to go pick up her friend's dog and bring it back to the apartment, they didn't really show much. So I assumed that actually she had moved and got another apartment by herself. Right. And then when that incident happened, I was like, okay, she is like, by herself in her apartment and then there when she invites the guy over and her roommate <laughs> shows up I was like wait a minute I thought that she was gonna have, like she had moved out already like she made enough to to move out right. apparently not yeah I know that was confusing um let's go to the slide oh yeah I hope more people see this. Anyway, Emily the Criminal did not, I mean, did okay, better than average, but not much better than average. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, I thought it was good. I highly recommend it, but I didn't think that there were standouts, especially in the categories that we are highlighting, like hair and makeup, jewelry. Um, I thought that it was like just a good storytelling. I didn't really care for the ending. There were no special offense. There wasn't a soundtrack. I think it was just overall good. Yeah, I mean, it it definitely was not a high budget production, but that's okay. It's a lot of good storytelling is done on a low budget. 
um, I saw a love story and that seemed relatively low budget, but also very good. So you don't need money to tell a good story. Oh, I need, I just saw the trailer for a love story. Like, what did I see? I think it was when I saw uh, Fire of Love and I haven't seen it since. So I really hope that it's still in the movie theater because actually it looks pretty good. It's still, well, the image for it is still on the app. Um, okay, I'll that definitely doesn't check always AMC. Mean, yeah, that doesn't always mean that it's still out though. Yeah, maybe in a different, yeah, I'll check. But yeah, that, that looks interesting. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any other thoughts and feelings to share about Emily the Criminal? No, it's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you next time.